shafts are on tapers. And there's a draw bolt to tighten them in. And, and um, um, but it, it didn't run for very long. And then on Friday, I figured out it's because one of the bevel gears slipped on its taper shaft. And the but I mean, got it ran at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it ran. Yeah, it ran for about 30 seconds, well, and it ran out. Well, were you doing a happy dance? <laughs> so I pulled the plug on, oh. the, on the ignition because it had run out of oil. Oh. <laughs> um, so, yes, so Friday I s tweaked the, the valve timing and tightened the draw bolt a little bit tighter. I have some alloy screws on order. These are just stainless. So just like you learned your lesson Unbreakos, about the Unbreako uh, way, Unbreako for for connecting rods, I'm going to use some super alloy screws here so I can really crank them tight, um, and hopefully they'll stay. Um, when I went to readjust it yes, last, yesterday, this this screw was a little bit easy to tighten, <coughs> whereas this one hadn't slipped and it wasn't. I couldn't tighten it any more than it already is. So, um, who knows? It might actually stay uh, timed uh, today. Uh, if it stays timed today, I might even bring it tomorrow. Uh, bring it tomorrow anyway. Did you put some Loctite or something on it this time? No. Uh, it's steel against steel, and it's a 10 to 1 taper which is a little bit too steep for a locking taper. Um, uh, and that's why there's a draw bolt. Um, so, do you have valve interference on that engine when it's out of time? No. The, the head, is, the head um, whatever you want to call it, bowl, is huge. The valves can't ever touch the piston tops. That would be a really good thing. That would be a, that would be a bad <laughs> scenario. Yeah. yeah, that can't happen in this particular model. Um, the valves don't travel far enough. And the valves are, are perpendicular to the head. It's not like the ones that are angled where the head, the rim of the valve needs to cut out of the piston. Anyway, I could go on about how this was Hell Month, uh, or I could just try and start it. Excellent. you. Uh, so, okay, I think that's a, a that's an invitation to stop talking. Because uh, I have a whole box full of stuff to... No, no, no. Ah, oh, pardon me. Yeah. Okay. Pardon me. I was gonna get it out of the blast. Oh, it's not gonna. We're not gonna rev the engine to full RPM. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so I'm still using a once-through oiling. Right. Um, and then the, I've got this can to collect the oil. And, uh, so we fill the oil. Is that the great British tradition? <laughs> Well, the real engine didn't turn very fast. They were pretty slow engines. Big props, though. And I got to tell you the story about the uh, coolant header tank. I finally mastered the uh, art of TIG welding aluminum. Uh huh. By walking down the street to my <laughs> friend, who's a, your buddy's house, has been TIG welding aluminum since he was in high school, and he was able to TIG right over the blowholes that I had left in there. <laughs> <laughs> it is well. Perfect. So, did, it was your mastery by getting somebody else to do it? Yeah, that's what I said. What could be better? That's what I said. Whatever works. Okay. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. It's nice that you can accomplish it yourself after the instruction, but... 30 years is too short. Yeah. What are you using for coolant? Uh, this is mostly water. There's just a little Gatorade in there for color. <laughs> <laughs> that was truly a British engine. You'd be using castor oil for the oil. And
And there's still one cooler <coughs> leak up here. So the catch pan gets a little mixture. <laughs> We have enough fuel in the fuel tank. Uh, when I was at when I was in um, Oregon and Portland one time on that we around see, see all these hobbies and all these engines and everything. Uh, and uh, one, one of the guys had made a diesel engine, a true E diesel, and he run it. It was in the building. It didn't run everybody out of the building. I think that was leaky. That thing just spewed up. There's no guarantee this is going to run, yeah, because <laughs> it ran Thursday and I spent Friday retiming the, the starboard camshaft and didn't run it because I didn't want it. I just wanted to preserve the camshaft setting. Is there any possibility we can take out Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> you want to hold this in? <laughs> just don't pry it up. <laughs> So, I helped my father when we built the engine. One turn on the needle valve. Fuel. So obviously, well, I don't know how obvious it is, but I cut a lot of corners to try and get to the first pop. So obviously, the coolant tank. Uh, was a worthy effort, but I still need to do a fuel tank and uh, all the easy stuff, right? The rest of the <laughs> oil fire. pressure gauge. I just plugged <laughs> off the oil pressure gauge hole. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that's. I said there's a there's still a water leak up here, but fortunately that's after the water's already traveled through the through the uh, cylinder bank and done its cooling job and it's just dripping hot cooling. Uh, let's see if we can prime this baby. <coughs> that sounded like the primer shake off. And, you know, earlier I was joking about um, getting carpal tunnel syndrome, burning the, the little uh, uh, temporary uh, flywheel on here. My wrists don't have a tendency for carpal tunnel syndrome. But I really do have a sore, sore, <laughs> sore shoulder today from hand propping yeah. on Thursday before I figured out that my camshaft was had gone... Uh, out of time, and, yeah. and I kept on trying to. Do you to have start marks it. on there so you'll know if it's out next time? Yes. That'd be a good idea. So, the way you time this engine is just like on the full size. Um, there's there's a hole in the oil pan through which you can observe timing marks on a timing disc. Hmm. Uh, no, I, I was talking about your cam timing. Yes. You have a mark on there. Yes. You can't time the cams until you know where the crankshaft is. Right. Correct. And the way you know where the crankshaft is is you look through the hole in the bottom of the oil pan oh. and look at the timing disc that you can see. That's the same as on the full size engine. But I have to use a dental mirror to figure <laughs> to see where it is and So that gives you top dead center? Yes. So that tell that that tells me when the starboard um, cylinders are at top dead center and then I align it so the number one cams are at the top yeah. um, and then I bolt it down and then I time the, the distributors and then um, and then there's a six there's another mark on the timing at 60 degrees later which is where the uh, the port bank uh -huh. uh, is timed relative to. So I think from my experience on Thursday, the gloves aren't really necessary, but 
<laughs> clear? Yeah, clear. <laughs> Fire guard out. Pardon? Is the fuel... What did you say? I said fire guard out. Hmm. That was what the said in the military. Oh. Yeah. Where they started an engine. Oh, we're getting nothing. Turn it on. Yeah. The LEDs on the ignition are... on the ignition boards are going. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Only 12 years in the making. Wow. One year for cylinder? Yeah. Wow. Like yeah, that. one year for cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were right, right? That is awful slow speed engine. That's fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. it, it would rev up a lot faster, but I'm afraid to rev it up. Yeah.